Here's a practice problem that can give us a sense of how to approach constant acceleration problems. In this case, we have two constant acceleration scenarios and we're going to compare their outcomes. So we have a car that's 3.5 meters in length, traveling at 20 meters per second, approaching an intersection. The width of the intersection is 20 meters. The light turns yellow when the front of the car is 50 meters from the beginning of the intersection. So if the driver steps on the brake, the car slows down at minus 3.8 meters per second per second. And if the driver steps on the gas, the car accelerates at 2.3 meters per second per second. The light will be yellow for three seconds. The question we're trying to settle is, should the driver use the brake or the gas? Now, as with any physics problem, a really good first step is to draw a picture. And here's that picture. We have a car that's traveling at initial speed V0. It's a distance D from the intersection. The length of the car is L. The intersection is width W wide. The light has just turned yellow. It's going to turn red in three seconds. So the parameters that have been given to us are that the length L is 3.5 meters, the distance D is 50 meters, the width W is 20 meters, the initial velocity V0 is 20 meters per second, the acceleration when the car is stopping or slowing down is minus 3.8 meters per second per second, minus because the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the velocity, and T, the time that the light is yellow, is 3.0 seconds or you can say that in 3.0 seconds, the light's going to turn red. I like to set up problems with the parameters listed symbolically rather than by numbers, because that's something that's general and we can switch around to any numbers. This can give us a better insight into what's going on in the problem. So what are we looking for in this first problem? We're looking to see if the car can stop soon enough. What does that mean? What that means is it needs to stop before the intersection. So I'll list that as a success criterion that the front of the car has to stop before the intersection. Well, what does that mean? To set this up quantitatively, we're going to need to set some coordinates and set some variables. So first I'd like to say what my variable is going to mean, and so I'm going to define a variable x, and that's going to be position of the front of the car. From what? The way I'm going to choose in this particular problem, and this is an arbitrary choice, is that the initial value of x is going to be 0. So we can set that up by defining the position of the front of the car when the light turns yellow as being 0. So here, what we're trying to find is where the car is when it stops. We don't really care when it stops. It can stop after the light turns red as long as it doesn't cross into the intersection. So we can start writing down what we know and see what we can use. So we know our kinematic position equation. So that tells us that x is the initial position, which in this case is 0, plus the initial velocity times the time, plus 1 half the acceleration times the time squared. This is in terms of time. This isn't in terms of velocity. We could figure out the answer to our question by finding the time at which the car comes to a stop and then figure out where it is at that time. To do that, we'd have to use the velocity equation, which is that the velocity is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. And that's okay. In this case, recall the acceleration is a negative number, so this will be getting, the velocity will be getting less with time. And we could use this, we could solve this for t to find out when it stops and then figure out where it is. But we already did that. We combined these equations in several ways before, and one was a very useful result. So let's write down uh, additional ways that we, equations that we have to choose from. How about this one? This one says that the square of the final velocity minus the square of the initial velocity equals two times the acceleration times the distance traveled. This looks like something we might want because we care about the distance traveled. We know what the acceleration is. We know that v, well, here we're going to say v equals 0 because that's when it stopped. This is just what we're looking for. And if we can solve this for delta x, we should have what we need. So doing the algebra, delta x is v squared minus v naught squared divided by 2a. And v 
recall is just zero, so I did that substitution. Now let's check that this actually makes sense. What this equation is telling us is that the greater the initial velocity is, that's the numerator of this fraction, the longer it takes to stop. So an increase in the initial velocity means an increase in the stopping distance. That makes sense. The denominator, having the acceleration, tells us that the faster it's stopping, the greater the acceleration, the shorter the stopping distance will be. And that also makes sense. So let's plug in the actual values. So how do we get that? So we've got two negatives, a negative in the numerator and the denominator. Those will cancel out. So we have 400. And then meters per second squared is going to be meters squared per second squared. And then in the denominator, we have 2 times negative 3.8. We'll remember the negative canceled out. So 2 times 3.8 is 7.6. So in terms of numbers, this gives us 400 divided by 7.6. And then in terms of the units, we've got, me we've got meters squared per second squared in the numerator, and then we're dividing that by meters per second squared. So remember, when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. So that means second squared per meter. Notice we're going to have a lot of things canceling out here. The second squared in the numerator and the second squared in the denominator cancel out. So we've got meters squared in the numerator and meters in the denominator. So that will get rid of the square. And we're left with just meters. And then we have 400 divided by 7.6 meters. So that gives us a result of 52.63 meters. Is that good? Well, recall our success criterion was that the front of the car had to stop before the intersection. What would that be? Well, that would be a distance d. The you know, x has to be less than d. d is 50 meters. x is greater than 50 meters. That's not good. Now, when the car is speeding up to try to get past the intersection by the time the light turns red, we have a slightly different situation. Here, our concern is that the back of the car is out of the intersection by the time the light turns red. So to set this up, probably what we want is our kinematic equation for position. Oh, what's A here? A is not negative 3.8 meters per second squared anymore, because now it's speeding up. So when it's speeding up, we specified that the acceleration was positive 2.3 meters per second per second. So that should do it. We can just plug these numbers in. We know everything. We know what x naught is. That's 0. We know what v naught is. That's 20 meters per second, and so on. Uh, we can just plug the numbers in, and that should let us find out what we need. Oh, what do we need? What is our criterion to say the back of the car clears the intersection? Well, that means that the back end of the car has to be past the intersection. So for the back end of the car to be here, the front has to be that distance plus L, the length of the car. So the car has to travel from x equals 0, where it started, to the intersection, that's a distance d, cross the intersection, that's a distance w, plus further distance still. And so those distances are 50 meters for D, 20 meters for W, and 3.5 meters for L. 50 plus 20 is 70, plus 3.5, that's 73.5 meters. So that tells us that back of the car clears the intersection by time t equals t. That means x at time t equals t has to be greater than 73.5 meters. So let's see what it is. So x naught, that's 0, plus v naught t, that's 20 meters per second, times 3 seconds, plus 1 half a t squared, that's 1 half 2.3 meters per second squared, times t squared, that's 3 seconds squared. So the first term is 0, of course, that's not even interesting. The second term, 20 meters per second times 3 seconds. Well, that's going to be 60, and then meters per second times seconds is going to just be meters. 
In the second term, well, we have numbers 1 half times 2.3 times 9. And then for the units, we have meters per second squared times second squared. And that gives us meters like it needs to. 1 half times 2.3 times 9. So that's 10.35. 60 plus 10.3 is 70.3. And that's not enough. It needs to be greater than 73.5, and it's 70.35. So it's 3 meters shy. That's not enough. So we see in both cases we failed. So it was kind of a setup problem. Either it couldn't accelerate enough, it needed to have a greater acceleration in stopping, or greater acceleration in clearing the intersection, or perhaps it needed to have a longer yellow light, or maybe it needed to not be going so fast when it's approaching the light.